Peter Dutton, welcome to 7.30. Thank you, Sarah. Was it humiliating for you to have to stand up and support Labor's changes to the tax cuts? Well, Sarah, we stood up uh, for people that we want to see uh, given assistance, and it's $15 a week. It doesn't start until July, and it addresses some of the damage that Labor's done to the economy, and the cost of living pressures are really acute for families. So we listened to that uh, and we acted upon it. I would have much preferred to have done both what the Prime Minister had committed to and our own version of Stage 3 because well, well, there's more significant reform there, but yes. in the end you couldn't afford to do both. All right, well, we'll come back to what you'll do in a minute, but just to be clear here, you're the ones waving this through. You said that backing the tax cut is to support families who need help now. That sounds like the Leader of the Opposition describing good policy. We had uh, Stage 1, Stage 2 and Stage 3, so we've already put into the system about $200 billion worth of tax cuts. I think it's important to remember too that the Prime Minister's been elected now for just over 18 months. People are paying 27% more tax now than they did when he was first elected. They abolished the Lomito and the support that we had in place. So not only did we provide support through stage one and two, uh, but the Prime Minister made changes which increased taxes for Australians. And that's why a lot of families, not just because of their mortgage increases and petrol prices and every other cost of living pressure that they're experiencing, uh, but also because they know that uh, there's not real wage growth and their purchasing power is going backwards with inflation. Mm. And they've got a Prime Minister who jacked up taxes. Now, he's given some of that back now. Yes. Not all of it, I might say. Mm. Uh, but nonetheless, they need support because they have had two budgets now where Labor has so we're, extra pressure on those families. Uh, uh, as you just said, you've made, that, you've made that argument, but we're clear now that we agree that this is good policy and you support it. So therefore the question flows from that. Do you give credit actually to the government for taking a big political risk in breaking a promise in order to help those families? Well, Sarah, I, I don't think it's your job to push the, the position of the government. It's absolutely not. This is, a, this, is, uh, this is an outside observer saying, yeah, I wish is was. this political courage? Well, I'm, I'm going to reject that absolutely. Yeah. This is a question about whether you, as a political observer, acknowledge there is some courage involved in breaking a promise, incurring all of the criticism that they receive for that and will continue to receive in order to help families. I think the families. Prime Minister promised the Australian public on 100 occasions. He supported legislation. He went to two elections with a particular policy. I think what he's done now is not provide substantive tax reform that will address bracket creep. As the Treasurer pointed out on your own show, they did this with the Dunkley election contest in mind. The Prime Minister would see a big swing against him I'm as... I'm not sure that's what the Treasurer says, but... Well, um, he would, he would see... The Prime Minister would see a big swing against him as a significant blow to his leadership. So if you're suggesting that that's admirable, that he's acted in his own political interest... I'm not making a, I'm not making a judgment on whether it's well, admirable I'm, or I'm, not. I'm, I'm asking I'm, you to reflect I'm on whether it shows political courage. I'm answering your question courage. of whether I think that mm. uh, I should agree with your praise of the Prime Minister. Not my praise, I just think, a question. Uh, I think the Prime Minister has decided that he wants a political fix for Dunkley. I don't think that's disputable. Uh, I think it's uh, absolutely the case that they've made a political decision. Now, we had stage three tax cuts. Uh, stage three, as I say, because we delivered $200 billion worth of tax cuts through one and two. And the reform that stage three bought uh, allowed us to address some of the bracket creep concern. Every economist points that out. Let, let's just come back to bracket creep because it's, it's, mm. it's a tricky, complicated topic and I don't want to snow the audience. So let's, let's go at that slowly. I just want to stay with this subject just for the moment. To be clear, what you are doing is you're criticising the government, you're impugning their motives while supporting their tax cut. That's right, isn't we're, it? We're supporting taxpayers who are doing it tough under this Labor government. The government's version. We always said that there would be a tougher time for Australians with the Labor government. They've had two budgets where they've made bad decisions. They've driven up inflation. As a result, people's mortgages are staying higher. Australians, we know under this government, are paying uh, probably about $24,000 a year in after-tax dollars extra because of the 12 interest rate increases. Not, They're also not within their control. Well, absolutely within their control uh, because, as the Reserve Bank Governor has pointed out, uh, this is a homegrown problem. And the not fact entirely is, a homegrown problem. And the fact that our inflation... Well, again, it's not for you to apologise for the I'm government. I'm not apologising for the government. I'm simply, I'm simply reflecting the yeah. views of economists around the world sure. who will acknowledge that we are dealing with a global inflation problem that then adds some domestic elements to it. I'm and, just stating and, the and case as you, that as is you, as you know, widely expressed. As you know, core inflation is higher than any 
any G7 nation. But I don't think we should be. I don't think so, we should be. I don't think we should be arguing about the causes of inflation in this. No, but you, you're this putting, you're putting to me whether or not the government needs to be praised, mm. and I don't believe that breaking a significant promise in the way that the Prime Minister has for his own political purposes uh, deserves to be praised. Now, well, you let me, might let have me a different in, view, but that's, let me, that's let me, my view. I understand that. Let me just yeah. let me put it in these terms. I think what you're saying is this is good policy, you agree with it, you, you would do the same thing, I assume, but you've certainly supported this. So why do you get to support it for the right reasons, but you have to impugn the government's motives for doing exactly the same thing that you are supporting. We had money uh, that was hypothecated, set aside for stage three tax cuts. The Prime Minister's taken that money and he's put it into other tax cuts. We are the party of lower taxes and Australians are struggling at the moment under a bad government. And the decisions they've made has made it more expensive for families to balance their budgets, for small businesses to survive. And many people uh, are facing very significant stress within their own households. Mm. Uh, and the Prime Minister has made a judgement uh, to take money from that which had been legislated uh, into another form of tax cuts. We mm. support it on the basis not of supporting his lie, but of supporting families who are hurting as a result of not bad decisions Not supporting the lie, but you are supporting the, the families, policy. The families who deserve that money. But the families get, get that money because of the policy. And they won't get it until July, mm. as you would point out. Um, you would have been critical of the Prime Minister of that last night. In the interview, I didn't get to see it, but I'm sure you would have raised that point as to why it's not starting until July, given that families are facing that pressure now. And uh, I think the Prime Minister's motives are absolutely transparent, and I'd be surprised that, uh, that good journalists aren't pointing it out. Well, let's talk about what you're going to do, because mm. you're now in the position where you are waving through the government's tax cuts, and whatever you say, that's a painful moment for any opposition leader. But you have said that you will bring a new tax policy uh, to the next election. If you're going to reinstate those tax cuts for wealthier Australians, as you've indicated that you will, the cost for that is $9 billion. How do you propose to pay for that? Well, well again, that's a question put by the Labor Party. So uh, I think, uh, as I pointed out yesterday, you would have seen um, I'm just going to, if, if I may, if I may, I do want to push back against the characterisation that that is a labour point. The cost of those well, tax cuts that you're going to reinstate well, is a, a $9 billion. Well, there's a remarkable coincidence in the arguments you're putting to the government's arguments. That well, let's, not, let's so not argue let's here. Let's put aside the coincidence. Let's, let's agree on what we can agree on. The tax cuts have been costed at, at reinstating those tax cuts comes at a cost of $9 billion. The question is, how do you pay for that? But, but again, Sarah, don't misrepresent what I said. I was very clear in the press conference yesterday that we want additional tax cuts because we think that Australians are under significant stress and by the time that we get back into government, uh, it's always the, uh, the requirement for a Liberal government to clean up a Labor mess and the damage that they've done to the economy is significant. Uh, the record numbers of uh, businesses going broke, of people losing their jobs, etc., and people just can't keep their head above water. So there will be support that's required for many Australians to get back into a position that they were in, frankly, before the Prime Minister was elected. But so to be clear, you are talking about reinstating those tax cuts for the higher income earners that were originally part of your but, Stage but 3 plans. What, what, I, what I said yesterday was that in keeping with Stage 3, which mm. is... Uh, and, the, and the essential principle of Stage 3 was to address bracket creep, uh, we will make announcements once we know the fiscal position in the run-up to mm. the next election. There's a budget, obviously, in May. The government's talking about uh, taxes on... Uh, well, as we know, superannuation, they've already done that in the last budget. Uh, they're talking about changing the negative gearing settings. Uh, they haven't properly ruled out uh, changing the taxation arrangements in relation to the family home, and we don't know what they'll do with trusts and uh, with frank dividends as well. So let's see what the fiscal settings are mm. and what they do in the budget and what money is available. Uh, and we can make those decisions and we'll make the announcement about what our tax po package will be at that time and we'll know what quantum is required mm. to be funded each year. Uh, but I think it's prudent to do that in the run-up to the next election. That, 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 I, that I accept that that's not an unusual position to take. However, just on one of the details, so one of the things that happened in the Stage 3 tax cut changes is that the government reinstated or is now keeping the 37% tax bracket. Do you expect that you will take that tax bracket away as you had intended? Well, well again, uh, let, let's see how much money is available. Uh, $9 billion a year is a lot of money, but this government spent an extra $209 billion over the last 18 months, which is a big part of why there's domestic pressure on inflation. Uh, and that's, I think, been acknowledged by the Reserve Bank Governor, uh, who points out, as we said before, that 
homegrown inflation uh, is the problem at the moment. Um, I want to talk about the week that you have had because mm. um, thanks to the intervention of a former Prime Minister, you found yourself having to say to the gallery, I quote, have you found me to be a thug? That is an astonishing question for an oppos opposition leader to ask the press, isn't it? Well, I was asked a question by a journalist uh, whom I've known for many, many years uh, to respond to that uh, comment. Um, and I asked the journalist who knows me well, um, had she ever found me to, to be a person of that character? Um, of course she hasn't, um, because it was a fabrication and, uh, and it was a self-serving comment. Um, but I don't think anyone's scared of ghosts. I think everyone moves on. And I think, frankly, the Australian public has so moved on from that era uh, it's not funny. We are a united party. I lead a party uh, which is incredibly united, uh, more so than any opposition in recent history on either side of politics, to be honest. Uh, I think we put ourselves in a good position to win the next election, not just because we've got a bad government that needs to be voted out, but because we're working day and night on policy offerings that uh, we will uh, provide to the Australian public in the run-up to the next election, which I think will put us in a winning position. Let me just ask you about that, though, because that, that comment that you had to respond to, plus this you seeing you standing up and supporting the government's tax changes, which you kind of wanted to do, um, do you feel it's been... I guess what I'm saying is it's been a difficult first week for you here. Do you feel also that your political momentum is slipping away? I just think it's such an ABC perspective, if I might say. Um, all the culture... It's so far left within the ABC just seems to permeate through many questions uh, when you go on to a now, program like this. Let me, and, let, and that's let the, me, that's let me ask difficulty. why you would characterise it in those terms. If we look at the situation, there's widespread agreement. I think, the, I think you're the only journalist that's putting that analysis there, apart from The Guardian, uh, apart from you know, some of the other left-wing online publications. Uh, the fact is that we are more united than ever in the Liberal Party. Nobody's looking backwards. Uh, we are holding the government to account. The reason the Prime Minister has acted to break his promise and to lie to the Australian public is because of the pressure that we've put him under. Well, let me ask you this question. Let me yeah. put it in a different way because we're not sure. going to agree on, on decent grounds for talking about political momentum. And I should say the Prime Minister rejected the same proposition as well, so it does cut both ways. Yeah. Um, how big an argument was there in Shadow Cabinet about this decision to abandon your principal on stage three and support this policy? Well, there was a discussion about uh, what options we had in mm. relation to uh, supporting stage three as we had proposed because the government had taken that money and put it toward their own plan. Uh, and it was a significant broken promise. Uh, I don't think the Prime Minister will recover his credibility. I think the Australian public look at him in a very different way now. I think some what people... About, what about you in Shadow Cabinet? How much resistance was there to well, taking I'm that... About, I'm not talking about Shadow Cabinet. To, uh, but and, to taking that position, I'm to just, roll over, as it were, to agree to back wholeheartedly I, I, the government's policy. The Shadow policy. Cabinet was, was unanimous in the position I, that we I, took. I beg your pardon, I did mean uh, the party room at that stage. Yeah, that and, and sim similarly in the party room. I mean, there was, there was limited discussion mm -hmm. in relation to uh, the position we took. There was nobody who pushed back against uh, or argued uh, differently than, uh, than what we took to the party room. And... People saw the, the pragmatism and uh, the reality of the situation that we we faced. I want to tell people that uh, uh, that they don't need support, but under this government, of course, they do. Well, let me uh, let me let me ask you a question um, yeah. a question about let's finish on policy because yeah. I want to get away from this idea that we are debating any points here yeah. from a particular political perspective. I, just, I, I guess just just in terms of your point, though, if I, if I might challenge it a little further. Uh, we're 5248 in news poll at the moment. Um, in the midst where, of a cost of living crisis, in, shouldn't you be leading? I can tell you, Sarah, there are very few governments uh, who at this term in the cycle uh, would be in the position that Anthony Albanese is in. And what about you? We're in the midst of a raging cost of living crisis. Every pollster in the country says it's the one message coming through. Mm. Shouldn't you be leading in the polls in my, the midst my, of such my, a situation? My numbers have gone up something like 20 points over the last 12 months, which is uh, not something that you would acknowledge in this program, but that's the reality. The Prime Minister has... We acknowledge every truth as it appears. I wish it were true. Uh, the Prime Minister has a greater net uh, unfavourable uh, number than I do, um, not something you'd point out. Uh, so I'm perfectly comfortable with where we are. Uh, I think we're in a strong position. We have a united team. We have a weak government. We've got a Prime Minister uh, who, if you think, is not under challenge. Uh, ask yourself why he trashed his reputation 
uh, and dispensed with the position he promised to the Australian public on a hundred occasions. He's a person under pressure. There's no question about that. Let me come back. Let and me come back to what I was, uh, that's, where that's I was a, going there. That's which a scenario was, where we are now. Let's end on a question about policy, because just about every tax expert in the country um, mm. says we need to. Not everyone, but just about says we need to shift the burden from income tax. I asked the Prime Minister this as well last night. Didn't get an answer from him. Would the opposition advocate for a tax summit to pursue real tax reform? Well, I, I, did, I did yesterday, and I've, I've said this in my last two budget and reply speeches, uh, that we are willing to sit down with the government. I'm very much uh, shaped by the Howard and Costello era when I first came into Parliament. I was the Assistant Treasurer at that point. Very happy to sit down with the Prime Minister. Uh, and we've offered that bipartisan support. I've met with Bill Shorten in relation to the NDIS and helping to make that a sustainable program. We're willing uh, to conduct ourselves in the same way that Howard did in opposition and work with the government where they've got sensible suggestions that are in our country's interest. Peter Dutton, thank you for a lively debate. Um, I enjoyed it. Please come again. My thank pleasure. you. Thank you.